This should be interesting. Controversial, but interesting. This is a colloidal silver generator. A friend got in touch and said, my, my silver generator's broken down, it doesn't light up anymore. Is there any chance you could take a look at it and see if you can fix it? I said, no problem, send it through. And part of the reason I wanted to send, to have him send it through was because I, I wanted to see what was inside it. I wanted to see how it was built. Uh, because I went through a spell of making these. I've even got an entry back on my website ages back showing how to make a fairly neat one. I'll show you a picture of that one. It's a, a little handheld unit with nice uh, silver electrodes going into jack connectors that just plug into the base. It was quite handy. But let me show you the concept of what this does. So you get a glass and you fill it with water, not just any old water. If you put in ordinary tap water, you're going to get quite nasty, uh, complex silver compounds. But if you want pure, proper colloidal silver, which is a, a dispersion of silver molecules in water, then you have to fill it with distilled water, high purity water. And that means you actually need quite a high voltage to cause electrolysis of the electrodes. So these are silver electrodes, pure 0.999 silver electrodes or something. I can't remember. Is it 99.9%? .9%? They're quite high purity. They cost a bit more than ordinary sterling silver, which is an alloy, but these are just pure silver. And you place them into the water, not touching, the spaced apart, and you apply a DC voltage across them at low current. Uh, well, there is no choice for the low current, because uh, the typically, I used to use one PP3 battery for 9 volts, which was super slow, but most people connect three PP3 batteries in series, so they get about 27 volts, and they sit it in, and they leave it for several hours, and it gradually diffuses a fine mist of silver uh, molecules into the water until they use a total dissolved solids meter, which kind of measures liquid resistance, and it tells them what quantity there is, and they get it to a specific level. And... Uh, in my case, I use the box, like this one does, that just sits on the glass. It sits on like this with electrodes in. Let me, I can't fit these silver electrodes in this. I'll, I'll fit a copper electrode in, but I have to say, this uh, thing's broken. I've had problems with this. I thought this was a great design at first, but yeah, see how it just popped out? It's not a great design. It's actually crap. This is a really bad design because it's using what you might call eBay-ish components, and that involves a little plastic pin holding against a, a metal contact inside. It's not very good, but the idea is you stick the electrodes in like this and then you just place it on the glass. And uh, in this case, you plug in this chunky looking uh, adapter and uh, turn it on. The, in this case, the blue light lights and it applies a fairly high voltage across and uh, then you leave it for X amount of time. So this unit had problems. And if I open it up, uh, you'll go, oh, when you see there's not an awful lot inside. Inside is the jack connector. It goes straight over to the switch. There's a diode for polarity protection, which is nice. It's a 1N4148 diode, which is incidentally dead. It's blown open circuit. Then there's a little boost converter, an eBay special, the sort you'd buy for just a couple of dollars, probably. And it takes 9 volts in, and it boosts it up to 27 volts to emulate the three 9-volt uh, batteries. And then it's got a 150 ohms, a very crispy, crunchy 150 ohm resistor, what's left of it. It was measuring 147 ohms, it's probably measuring less now. And then it goes out to a cheap eBay, eBay speaker connector. So uh, everything is, uh, this is probably an eBay connector, an eBay switch, eBay module. It's all very eBay-ish. And it was probably sold on eBay, I'm guessing. But there we go. So anyway, what actually ha has happened here is that the, the electrodes, when they're put in here, are kind of wobbly and floppy, and they've shorted together. And when they've shorted together, that resistor, that little quarter-watt resistor, well, let me show you the uh, circuit diagram of this. And I'll show you what went wrong. Let's uh, zoom down onto this. Focus. And we'll zoom down a bit. So what we have here, the 9 volts comes in, goes through that diode, the dead diode. I would have used a 1N4001 1 amp diode there. It goes through the switch, which has a built-in LED and a resistor. And when you turn it on, it goes to that boost converter that is programmable on the voltage. You can set it. They've set it to about 27 volts, and they've got that quarter watt 150 ohm resistor. Let's do the maths, shall we? What would happen if those electrodes shorted together? I equals V over R. So that's 27 volts divided by 150 ohms equals a current of 180 milliamps would flow. And you think, well, that's not too bad. 180 milliamps times 
27 volts, because that's what's across this resistor when they short out, is almost 5 watts. And that's a quarter watt resistor, and that probably explains why the resistor is now black and crunchy. And uh, also why uh, the diode probably popped at the input, because the power supply will have a little capacitor in the output, and when that was shorted out, it would have seen a spike of current through the diode and it would have blown it. So I wasn't sure about the resistor value. It was showing about 147 ohms. I thought, I'll just contact the company. And uh, they said, yeah, it's 150 ohms and it's odd for the diode to fail, but it's a 1N5148. It's not. It's a 1N4148. 5148 is a completely different diode. So what would I do to improve this design if I was keeping it? I would convert that to uh, 1N4, 1N4001 or up to 1N4007. Doesn't really matter. It's a one amp diode. I would add a PTC thermistor fuse because this operates at super low current. It's normally just like one milliamp or so, but I would add, say, a PTC fuse, PTC, and I'd add it just at the back of this connector here and rated, uh, say, 0 0.1 amp, 100 milliamp. And then I'd upgrade this to one watt. And I had looked out the components. I was going to fix this. Uh, and send it back to Tomas, who sent it to me, a showman in, uh, in Glasgow. And uh, then I discovered just how shit these were. So I think I'm going to have to, and I'm going to have to rebuild it. And I've been thinking about things. The current is usually quite low, and I, I should perhaps explain. Let me tell you what the whole colloidal silver thing's about anyway. It's very controversial. It's total 5G status, complete hysteria type things. Um, there's a bit of a cult on the internet. If you just type the sinful words colloidal silver, let me just write that down. Uh, it's actually written on top of this. Oh, well, I'll just write it down anyway. Colloidal silver. So it's basically pure silver suspended in water and people drink it. And there's a bit of a problem associated with that called algeria, uh, which is when your skin actually, because the it's kind of, it's very small molecules of silver, and it can actually get into your skin as pigment, and it can make people go blue. There are pictures of it, but a lot of them are enhanced by the media companies. They look a lot worse than they are. And I have to say that for a while, I did drink a glass of colloidal silver every day, but I was making it really badly. I was using my device, which was very simple, but because distilled water was very hard to find in Glasgow, and I didn't have a water still at the time, I was using tap water, which is a, a sin. So at a 9 volt battery, sorry for the greenness of the picture, these are from the website, these are from dial up era. Uh, 9 volt battery, negative going to one terminal, the positive went to an LED to show it was in the water, just pointless, but I added it and that lowered the voltage for that was worse. And then a resistor to limit the max current if they got shorted out and then to the red terminal. And it was, it was just the silver terminal sticking at the bottom, you filled it with tap water, you put it on, left it for a while and then drank it. And it might have been my imagination, it might have been paranoia, but I could swear that in the summer I was looking at my hands and thinking they are starting to look slightly metallic and grey looking. Uh, so I stopped. I don't know, maybe it was just paranoia. I'm not really sure. But there are many instances of people who have used badly made uh, solution or drank huge quantities of it, like tons of it, because they thought it was medicinal. And uh, that happened to them. It may also be down to the person's metabolism and build. But anyway, uh, the idea is that this colloidal silver is touted to cure all ills because it's uh, anti-viral and bacterial in some way. Um, and there is evidence to support that. But there's also, unfortunately, the, any evidence to support it is swamped out by people selling really expensive machines. This one's about 50 quid. Uh, which is not bad for a handmade device that does it. It needs those improvements. It needs a beef, beefier diode and that and that. It, that would make it better. But um, the industry is polluted by people who put them out with like quartz crystals and uh, special magic frequencies and or secret voltages and currents. And they put out lots of misinformation about it claiming that ionic silver is one thing and uh, electrolytic silver is another, when in reality in old textbooks they were pretty much referred to as the same thing.
Uh, let me think. What can I do? Yeah, I was going to actually possibly make him a new one, but this could be a controversial one. We're talking about low current here. So I was thinking, why bother with a power supply? Would there be a hazard into having an open circuit high voltage here? So it's only one milliamp, typically being passed through the liquid. That also might be controversial. The factories that make it in bulk tend to really smash current through using high voltage. But there is so much controversy, it's really hard to find good, accurate information because all the hype, people trying to hype their own processes. But um, I was thinking for safety, run it from the mains, but for safety, have a big string of resistors because uh, when you've got bare electrodes and wet hands, ultimately you're going to have with this, it would all have to be potted and you'd have to have a string of resistors in series so that if one failed or two failed, it's not, it's not going to pose a hazard. It's just playing super safe. Two would have been enough, but I decided I'll probably go with four. And in 240 volts, that means you'd have two sets, one the live, one the neutral. That's in case the plug gets swapped around. So there's protection. Um, in the UK, 240 or Europe, uh, it would be 27K resistors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. In 120 volts, it would be 15K resistors, eight of them. Just I, I recommend using lots of resistors for something like this. And then just a standard bridge rectifier. An LED in series, which will have plenty of current to make it glow. And then optionally optionally, a Zener diode clamp the voltage if we really want. But uh, with this arrangement, you could potentially, from the electrodes, you get a shock of up to about 2 milliamps. If you touch something grounded and held the electrodes, and that would be a sore shock, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be clamp your hands on, it would be a, a zing, it would be quite unpleasant. But that would uh, work well with uh, distilled water. That would certainly, that would result in a fairly high current, well, I say high, it's going to be, it's aimed to have one milliamps, one milliamp. So the question is, I've also come across discussion of AC electrolysis, but I'm not sure that would work. Applying, because if you had AC, then technically speaking, you could have put two inverse LEDs in parallel and then just got rid of all this and just the resistors. And that would then put one milliamp through AC, but I'm not sure that is suitable for electrolysis like that. I may try that. There's only one way to find out. But in the meantime, I'm going to make one of these. I'm going to make it right now. And I'm thinking that I will use uh, a connector like this to connect the silver electrodes. And I have to say, these are pure silver electrodes. I bought them from a bullion merchant in Glasgow, uh, Bairds. And I got, I got my fingers burnt well and truly because I had uh, been playing around with colloidal silver. I'd made them as gifts for friends. And I just got used to going and buying a couple of meters of silver wire. Uh, then the recession happened a while back and everybody decided to cash in and invest in silver and I didn't even think about it. I went in and said, uh, two meters of three millimeter diameter silver wire, please. And they came back the bill and it was like, they'd cut it and it was all bagged up and it was like, oh shit. Yeah, that wasn't a good experience. Uh, fluctuating prices of metals. Hmm. Interesting. But anyway, I'm going to build that right now. So I shall be back shortly. So one moment, please. So here's where I'm at so far. Let me zoom down on this for ya. Uh, I have made a chain of resistors going from the mains, and each one is roughly about 108k. And uh, they're going to an improvised bridge rectifier with an LED in series with a suitable connector for the rods. And I'm going to try and pot this in hot melt glue. It may not work very well. It may be a disaster. It's the sort of thing that would lend itself to a tiny little box, isn't it? So um, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to bring in the meter. And I shall test, initially, the resistance of these strings as a precaution because they are an important safety feature. Lots of resistors in series. And I'll test from the uh, plug pin here. So to one of these, it should read about 108k. Good score. Oh, that's my, that's my juicy fingers are influencing that. There's 108k. That's good enough. And the other one will be about the same. Excellent. Now I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to put this to the current setting. And I should get a short cur circuit current uh, of about one milliamp. And I've got a little LED in here. So I've got the resistor lines. I've got an improvised bridge rectifier and an LED. So I shall turn this round to the two milliamps DC setting. 
And I shall plug this in, at which point it all becomes live. And I shall probe this. What am I going to get? Am I going to get my one milliamp? Is the LED going to light up? The LED has lit, and I'm getting about one milliamp. And that, the open circuit voltage will be quite high across that. But as the colloidal silver gets more and more conductive, the voltage across it will theoretically go down, but the current will be roughly the same. Right, let's try potting this now. This is where it could all go wrong. I'm basically going to, I've got the heat shrink on here. I've unplugged this. I'm going to try drizzling hot melt glue on so that when I actually shrink this down onto it, it will hopefully seal. But I've sized this a bit big because I wanted to slide it over here as well and get it over the contacts of the connector. This is where a little plastic box would have been nice. I was very tempted to try and pot it into this box, but the fact it's metal just put me off that little bit. Is this a bit kind of bright? No, I can't really do much about that anyway. It's okay. Let's bring the glue gun up. I'm just going to splooge some out the glue gun, which I've got sitting on standby here. And I shall try, in fact, I'll just do it over the top of that. This is really going to swamp out. I shall try and drizzle some heart melt glue. Let's get the heat shrink sleeve well away from that before I do it. Uh, I shall try and drizzle some heart melt glue. This is not how you normally encapsulate mains voltage circuitry, by the way, I just thought I'd mention that. But this is just an experimental thing. I just want to make it relatively safe. So I shall drizzle more glue down that. And then when it gets down to here, I'm planning on hopefully squeezing some of that glue down into the vicinity of that connector. So I'll try and uh, get some on the inside of those. I'm probably setting myself up for failure here. The, the heat shrink will not probably go over that now. I should put another stripe down here just to build that up as a core because I'm going to remelt this inside the heat shrink to hopefully seal it up. This is definitely not how you'd normally encapsulate mains voltage circuitry. Rightio, I'm going to have to let that cool for a bit because I can't put the heat shrink over it until it's cooled a bit because if I do, it may attempt to shrink the heat shrink. Uh, prematurely, so I won't do that. So I'll just pause momentarily and uh, I'll come back once I've slid this over and about to actually remelt it. Okay, I think that's cooled enough. It slid on. It was quite hard to slide on. It's not an ideal situation. Uh, look at the glue that's spilling out there. It's not ideal at all, but that is okay. It's a prototype. I shall turn on my heat station and uh, bring out the hot air pen and we'll see if we can shrink this down a little bit. Maybe I should turn the temperature up. Maybe the air fluff a wee bit as well. And I'll see how this goes. And I'm just going to try and run this round here and shrink it down. This could take a while. If it does look like it's going to take ages because I've, I'm going to effectively have to re-melt that hot melt glue inside. So if it does look like it's going to take ages, I shall pause while I do it. So I want, uh, I want you guys to let me know what you think of the... Some of you will probably be into your colloidal silver stuff. And others will be sceptical of it and think it's quackery. I've got mixed thoughts. I think there is possibly a place where colloidal silver is useful. And it certainly could be useful in apocalyptic circumstances again. One of those sort of preppery type things. So as I heat this, the glue inside is spreading a little bit. I want a bit more up here. I want to spread it around where it goes into the cable. Certainly I thought it was quite fun when I first went on the internet many moons ago and discovered it. But it is controversial. Um, a lot of people make false claims about what it can or can't do. It's just one of those things. The internet is full of them. Okay, I'm going to deliberately melt some of this glue now down onto the connector to see if I can get a good solid connection because that will support the whole assembly so it doesn't flex too much. I've kind of, have I twisted that really? I have kind of twisted the resistor array but they've, they're all sleeved individually so it's not any, it's not a great big issue. It is a prototype after all. And the heat shrink has kind of slid back from the connections which isn't great because it might expose them a bit but that's all right. It's going to have bare electrodes sticking at the bottom, right? Tell you what, I think that's okay. I'm going to let that cool again. 
and I'll be back in a moment and we'll try it. We'll stick some electrodes in it and stick it in a glass of water and we'll see what happens. So that's it cooled down. I've got it ready to go in. It looks terrible, but it is just a prototype after all. I plug it in. No LED lights because there's no current flowing yet. But as soon as I put it into the water, the LED does light because current is flowing. This is standard tap water, so it's got impurities in it. If I turn the light off, you'll see, and I take the exposure off, you'll see the little light there glowing just to show it is passing current. And I'm guessing that after a while I should see a slight clouding around one of the electrodes. So I'm just actually going to pause for a moment and just wait and see if I can actually catch that clouding effect. So that actually happened quite quickly. The positive electrode here has the clouds of silver coming off it. You can see as I move it, it just leaves a little trail after it of those uh, tiny molecules of silver, I guess, really. Um, so what am I going to do about my friend's unit? I think that I may, um, rather than give him one of these dodgy units, I shall put this over to the side out of the way. Uh, what I may do is my friend's unit is I may... Where is it? Find a better connection for this. I'll make my modifications to it. I'll add the uh, the replacement, the one amp diode. I'll replace the little PTC thermistor here, put the higher power resistor here, but I'll actually change this connector because this one is not very good. It doesn't really support the uh, connections very well and they can wobble about and short together. So I'll fix this and I'll send it back to him. But this is a this is an interesting thing that I'd like to actually try this and see what quality it makes. The problem is to actually test it properly. I'd need to get the colloidal solution, the colloidal silver actually tested at a lab. But that's interesting. Um, it worked. And it is, it's always going to provide one milliamp across those electrodes roughly because the voltage across the water is going to be low compared to this mains voltage. But there we go, an interesting experiment and well worth doing. And just for the sake of completeness, here is the modification I did to the unit in the end. I replaced the diode with a 1 amp diode. I put the little uh, PTC thermistor in. It's rated for 100 milliamps. So that's going to be, the current on the primary side is going to be a lot higher than the secondary side, but it is just literally a few milliamps in the output anyway. So the only thing that's going to trigger that is going to be a short circuit in the output. There is a 150 ohm resistor here, which will pass more than that, but it's beefed up so it's going to tolerate that before this trips. And uh, for the output connection, I removed this original connector and I used the screws originally that were holding it on and I buffed the end of the file, soldered some connections onto them, put them through the same nuts and washers and then just put a bit of turner block in the bottom and clamped that on uh, so that you can just put your electrodes into these ones and tighten them up and it will grip them tightly. Um, I left the middle screws in the middle section. I was going to take the middle insert out, but I thought it'd be quite useful just for spare screws. And now when I put this together, I'm going to add a wee drop of more hot melt glue inside just to tack everything into place. When the power supply is plugged into it, this little shady Chinese power supply, and it's turned on, click, uh, then I should measure the higher voltage and output of that. So let's... Uh, Put this round to, let's put it round to the 200 volt setting. And this is boosted up from the 9 volt going in to 28 volts. So the equivalent of the sort of three 9 volt batteries in series, maybe just a little bit higher. So um, I shall send that back to Thomas and uh, then possibly play about more with this myself and just actually see what I can actually do with this. I quite like the idea of making a super tiny one with surface mount components all potted in a little box um, so that it's just basically a mains flex going in and the electrodes out the other. Looks a bit dangerous but uh, is actually relatively safe. The maximum shot you could get to ground off these would be about 2 milliamps which would be sore, it wouldn't be nice um, but between them it would be 1 milliamp. But uh, that's it. Fun experiment to do and this is fixed, so a good result all round.